Hey everybody, we have actress Keisha Sharp here with us today on BHL Conversations. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Live Conversations. Hey everybody, I'm Dario Kristen. You are tuning in to BHL Conversations. Joining me today is DJ Jesse J. What's up? And our very special guest that we're excited to have in the house today. Shit, you know her sad. from Girlfriends. She is also currently on American Crime Story, People vs. O.J. Simpson. Miss Keisha Sharp is with us today. Yeah. And all that beautiful hair she's got. Oh, thank Shut you. Because no. I slay. I slay. I slay. <laughs> well, 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 well. I love that. <laughs> thank you for thank joining you. us. Of course. Thank you for having me. We are really excited. I mean, we've been trying to get you in the studio for a while, so we're but very But you came happy. at the Perfect you came time. At the perfect Thank Because I can't wait what? Tell to me. watch this show tonight. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Okay, it's a great show. Girl. Is it not great? I'm watching it like a fan. I'm like, what's going to happen next? Really? Yes. Because we only got our scenes. Everything was so secretive. That's what I heard. Everything yeah, was so Yeah, so when secretive. I'm watching it, it really is watching it. So you guys didn't get time. to see the whole thing? Nothing. At, really? No, they were very secretive. So what are your feelings right now? You're watching this live. I'm excited. I'm excited just like you guys are. You know, I know what I, you know, my character does. And and, and I know the story, of course. We yeah. all know the story. But I, I'm just excited about seeing all the background, what's yeah. happening in everybody's yeah. lives just as everybody else. Everybody's talking about this show. I mean, everybody. every time I go to anything, social media, uh, you know, anybody's page is all about this show. Yes. There's a lot of buzz going on. Absolutely. And I want to get into that and you being on the show yes. a little bit later. But okay. first, I want people to really get to know some of the background with you starting off in the business because I know you're yes. from Brooklyn, New York. See, that Oop. is a misconception. And I'll tell you why. Half the internet says Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> Half the internet says Rochester, New York. Which one is it? The Rochester, New York. Upstate New York. Okay. That's so funny because yes. when I saw Brooklyn, I was like, she don't give me Brooklyn. No, I'll give you, you Brooklyn. So you I give me give Brooklyn. Brooklyn. No. Yeah, I'm like, no, no, I'm no. like I didn't you say give that me some you Brooklyn. Couldn't. <laughs> I'm an actor. I can give you Brooklyn. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, so I'm from Rochester, New York. Upstate right. New York. What was young Keisha like growing up in Rochester, New York? Honestly, oh gosh. No, I'm gonna no, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> tell the truth. I mean, I don't know if it's that exciting. I was very nerdy. Really? I don't believe that. Oh, I, I'm going to tell y'all. I played the clarinet, the cello, the piano. Um, I was nerdy. I listened in. <laughs> I was listening in my room with my little radio. Listened to old school, like not old school soul, like old school not soul. Like that was me growing up. I, I'm you just said old you, school not, not soul. soul. Can we just talk about it? And my brother and sister were very like they listened to rap music. They were complete opposite to me. I was really? just a nerd. I really was. And what? where do you fall in line with the other brothers and sisters? Um, I have an older brother and sister. Okay. And then it's myself, okay. and then I have a younger brother. Okay. Who, there's 20 years difference between us. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And my and it wasn't an accident. My mom had been trying and trying to have another child. So he's like. He's my brother, but sometimes I feel like he's my son brother. You I know what that. I mean? Yeah. Because I'm in his older sister, and I'm yeah. always, I feel like a mom sometimes to him. Um, but yeah, that was me growing up. Uh, involved with everything in school. Had a lot of friends. Went to an all-girls school. Oh. Oh. So yeah, what was see, it? Was, now, there, was there any the Why y'all yeah, don't know, I, 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 I hear people say they went to like an all-boy, all-girls school. Yeah. I always think that you might have been the little rebel then. You know what I mean? I wasn't. I was not. The, that was my sister, the middle child. She was the rebel. I was not. I was not that girl. So there was like no dating a lot. No, in high I dated, or? but not. I was really into my music and into acting. I did theater in school. I was like, you know, president of student body, you know, newspaper. I was a nerd. That's. I'm just telling y'all like it is. My See, husband, now I want to pull up some old pictures. No, don't be pulling up. I want to read an article. I want to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're gonna do it like you know they do um, Jimmy Kimmel pull up the old uh, picture. I'll be like, oh, Keisha. Most achieved. You know. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the proof. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you know, you have all these hats that you, yes. you wore in high school. So yes. how did it get kind of turned onto theater? I mean, you play, how many, you name like four instruments. Right. So yeah. like. It was, I had, I did make a decision between doing, being in an orchestra. Really? And yeah, I really did. And acting on stage. And so my decision was acting on when stage. When was that? It was of? junior year. Um, we had just, just done Hello Dolly and I was playing Dolly. I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Mm. So, um, was there an option for you to be in an orchestra at the time? Oberlin was the other school okay. I was looking at. So it was okay. the Boston Conservatory, Oberlin, and um, Tesh. Mm. And so I got in both those schools. I didn't apply to Oberlin because I had decided I didn't want to be. I didn't want to do the orchestra. That's not something I wanted to do. I still love it, but it wasn't something that I, my heart was calling me to. So yeah. theater was it. Theater was it for me. I loved theater. So I went to the Boston Conservatory and studied there. 
could, could you just kind of speak to, because I think a lot of, not even just girls, but I think a lot of kids at that time, yeah. you know, we go through a lot of um, decision. At that time, you have to make a lot of big decisions. For yeah. you, what was kind of, what was the experience for you, like, within yourself? Like, no, make, this is why I have to I do had this. the feeling, that that is just the truth. It was this feeling that I had, I felt at home. Mm -hmm. That's what the feeling was. I was like, oh. This is what I'm supposed to do. And it's a great feeling because, you know, when you go through life trying to figure out where am I supposed yeah, to go, girl, where am I yeah. supposed to be, so you do need to be in tune with yourself and really listen. And necessarily, you might not want to do what your body is telling you, your, your spirit is saying, no, this is right. You have to really follow through and say, no, I may not want to be an actor, which I did, but mm -hmm. um, I followed it because it was my heart. It was telling me this is what I'm supposed to do. And the same thing happened when I turned from theater to um, television and film. I was not okay. I was on set of this movie called Pootie Tang. I love Pootie right, Tang. So Listen, Pootie Tang was on HBO the other day. And I know Lance. Dance, shake your thing in. All right, all right. Music break. This one, wait, he had a straight up moves sure and movie. I sure did. 702, where my girl's at. No, okay. I love that movie. That was my movie. And I know Lance. Yeah, you know Lance. I love Lance. Yeah, yeah Lance is so, good people. Yeah, he's very yeah. good people. You know Pootie Tang? I know Pootie you know Tang. I've been to Pootie Tang's Halloween parties. Oh, I know those have to be good. No, they're real good. But when I was on that set, that that's the other time that it happened to me when it was just... I'm home. This yeah. is it. This is what I'm supposed to do. Now, again, I always say as an actor, this is what I'm supposed to do, but there's more to life than being an actor, right? So this is what I love doing, but my purpose isn't this. Right. My purpose is so much more. You know, I, I, I have all these wonderful organizations that I'm, I'm part of and I love that I can maybe have some kind of platform with the little notoriety you get as a um, as an actor, and that really is my purpose, yeah. right? But mm. I but what I'm doing as an actor, I love doing, but it's not my purpose. Your right. passion feeds your purpose. Boom! You gotta write that we down. We need a T-shirt. Okay. That's, a, that's an Instagram it's quote done. for y'all. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> now Broadway, uh, yes. you know, with Broadway, they say that that's the best way to train for anything really for television, is. movies, yeah. whatever. And some people don't do the the theater or Broadway yeah. route. How did it specifically help you in preparation for TV and oh, film man. jobs? For me, theater, I mean, gosh, you have to, you have all this time to prepare for this role, this piece that you're in, so you have this kind of discipline. And then also, when you're on stage, you have to give the audience 100% Absolutely. every night. No break. Now, no break. It's no like, oh, I don't feel like it. You know, with film, you're done, cut, that's done. You don't ever have to visit that scene again unless it's ADR or something went wrong, right? But with theater, every night, for me, the kind of actress that I am, I never phoned in anything. So I played this particular role uh, in an off-Broadway play called Living in the Wind, and I had to play a slave mm. the worst six months of my life. Why? Because every day I had to go through that same thing. Mm. Every day. Yeah. I was a nightmare. I have to tell you, I was depressed. My husband is of Caucasian descent. So he had. Why'd you look at Jesse when you said that? You know, he's kind of Caucasian. <laughs> She's trying you know. to figure it out. <laughs> you know, I am trying I'm to figure it out. I'm like, mm, you he's got a light skinned black man. Yeah. He's, he's a light skinned black man. Is that what it is? He got a little something. <laughs> no, he's but, Greek. But, you know, going through something for real for my body, for what I really felt as an actor, I'm really going through this every single night. I'm really going through this, right? So I'm going home to my husband, who is white, you know, so it was like. That's so interesting. It was really, he was like, I cannot wait until this play is over. I you was going to say, were like, you able to turn it off when you went home? You know no, I, mean? I had a hard time. Okay. I had a hard time because I, I emerged myself into this character. I had pictures up of every picture I could possibly find that dictated that, that, mm. that world I had up. Right. Because I wanted to be real and true to it. So... Was yeah, he, so what was he going? Yeah, so like, was he like, hey, babe, will you make me dinner? I'm not making you no dinner. Okay, what do you think, no, what do you yeah. think I it's am? It's like, you better get away. Nobody making you no dinner. Don't touch me. <laughs> that was really bad. Like, I wouldn't do it again. Were there any good conversations that came out of it as far as, oh, like... Well, listen, my husband is, like, just the best person. He's a beautiful man. Like, just not outside, just inside. Just one of those people that would have been on the front line. He would have been in the civil in civil war fighting for us. He's that That's guy, sad. right? Yeah. So he understood. He was never had a problem with it. He just was concerned about how putting my body through something like that every night cuz your yeah. body doesn't know that it's not real. Yeah. You That's know, true. your body really is going through all that, your heart, everything. Um so but the you one have, with theater is just already yeah, enough on your body. Ex exactly. And then add that to oh, it. Yeah, so me yeah, I'm sorry, boo. <laughs> you know, it's stressful. Oh, I know what my be. purpose is. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but no, but you know, I'm saying so it did prepare me because nothing it 
prepares you like theater because it's a discipline. You know, you're giving it 100% every time. When they say cut and they're like, we have to do this again, you're like, Psh, I, I got had to this. do this six months in every right. day. This is nothing. Yeah. You know, mm. so yeah, that kind of, that kind of, um, I, the word I'm looking for, look at me, I'm like, where is it? Um, the, <laughs> that kind of discipline, I'll just keep discipline. it with that, is it's hard to find anywhere else. Yeah. It's possible, but it's hard. And do then you, you start, oh, go ahead. Do you get, well, we talked to a, a lot of people who start off in theater and, as they get into the TV and film world, the yeah. world they start to crave that oh, theater yes, again, and honey. it's almost like the TV and film doesn't feed that. Yeah, because also you have this energy from the live audience, right? Yeah. So whether you're doing a comedy or you're doing a drama, you're getting this immediate feeling, this energy from everyone that you don't get in film. So you you miss that. You miss that that live. We're, you're giving me something, I'm giving you something, and you're like, you do crave it, and I miss it dearly mm. and deeply. Like, I'm already trying to, like, can we produce something in LA? <laughs> right, yeah. Some. Yeah. yeah, I do miss it. I miss it a lot. And then you started doing a lot of appearances on TV, Third Watch, yes. you were on Law and Order. Yeah. Um, and what was those experiences like at the beginning for you as a young actress to really be on those sets? I, it was a little nerve uh, nerve wracking because it was new for me, right? It's because I've come from theater, so yeah. what is this new genre for me? Um, but I quickly got over that because when you you really get involved with your character you're playing, you don't have time to deal with what Keisha is dealing with, right? right? Like it's like, girl, you need to go. You know, <laughs> you're not a part of this this piece right now. So what helped me was being 100% focused on the character I was playing. As soon as I lost a little focus and started thinking about Keisha's issues, yeah. that's when I would get into trouble and get nervous and I'm a shaky or whatever, that kind of thing. How do you talk yourself out of that while you're in the moment? You talk yourself into your character, what your character is dealing with. And you can use whatever I'm dealing with, Keisha, you know, if I'm nervous and I have this kind of nervous energy, then my character has to have that nervous kind of energy. Yeah. Let me figure out why she would, and I use it. Hmm. Um, you have to. Otherwise, you, you look, you know, they're like, um, can we recast this? Because <laughs> right. this girl ain't working, you know. So you have to use whatever's going on with you, but you have to be focused on that character. And they say that a little nervous energy is good for whatever you do because that kind of keeps you fresh and yeah. on top of your game a little and bit, too. And energy yeah. and on, on the edge. Yeah. Yeah. And we've seen now, I mean, obviously, you know, we have the Oscars coming up and yes. there's a lot of issues with diversity yes. in Hollywood. At the beginning, when you were starting off in like the, the 2000s, you were starting yeah, to work a lot. Yeah. Where have you seen the transition for black actresses go from there to where we're at right now? Well, it's interesting because there was a time there, I guess maybe 2000, oh, 2001, two, where you had the UPN and the WP yeah, and CW, had all those. Yep. <laughs> That was a good time, yeah. right? That was a good time in terms of more people of color working, right? right? Then there was a time where it was just gone. Like, they were just like, we done with y'all, you know? Right. <laughs> and there was nothing. After 2008, it really got bad. Yeah. There was nothing after the strike, the writer's strike. That's right. And so um, then it was really dry. It was really dry for all of us who were not working. And when I say people of color, I'm talking about all of us. Yeah. Black, Asian, Latino. Latino, yeah. Um, so this change really started happening because of Kerry Washington and Scandal, um, of course, Shonda Rhimes, that's her show. But that's when I started to see it really starting. People are like, oh, this black woman can be with this white guy, and people are all okay with that. Because mm -hmm. you didn't see that before. That's true. Ever. Granted, they're having an affair, but, you know, that's another <laughs> thing. But I'm just saying, you, you hadn't seen that on such a, on a wide, a, a major network. Right. So I started to see the change then where they're like, oh, people will accept this. So the auditions I'm going in on, now whether or not they pull the bullet in terms of they really hire you, but they're calling you in. I was always that black girl call, being called in for, well, if we go black, you know, that kind of thing. Right. You fit that I profile. I fit that, right. then she would work. And But nine times out of ten, they didn't go black, you know. Right. So they how, went kind of color, you know. Kind of color. <laughs> yeah, maybe. We're like, oh, put a, was, put a really light They look like, like they could be black <laughs> yeah. or something else. No yeah. racial ambiguous yes. going on that's there. That's true. That's yeah. true. Because if you go brown, brown, that for them, it I don't know. that They're still working on that. Yeah. So the change is happening now. Now in terms of the Oscars and that kind of um, thing that's happening with that in terms of the blackout, I think the issue has to be addressed before the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Like these movies that aren't getting greenlit, that aren't getting distribution, those movies are out there, those with really great parts for every person of color, right? That are Oscar um, nominated type films, but they're not getting money. Mm -hmm. 
they're not getting done. So when we talk about the Oscars, why aren't, you know, there's more diversity in Oscars? I think we need to talk about that before the Oscars. Yeah. Let's try to get these films done that should be done and stop talking about, well, who's in it? Well, that's too many black people. That seems like a black film now. You know, that kind of, yeah, yeah that kind of thing that's happening in the entertainment world. Well, it's interesting, too, because I recently sat down with Morgan Freeman um, for his new movie day is coming out, and we yes. were talking about the diversity issue, and one of the things he said, he's like, everyone else is making this a diversity issue, where it kind of what you're saying, yeah. what we need to start is having more writers, producers, directors who are of color in school studying and Absolutely. getting out there and producing and making those projects. Absolutely. And I think we are starting to see that change. We have you know, lots of places that are starting to, uh, like schools that are really pushing for that to come out. Um, Ava DuVernay, she, yes, she I just love teamed her. up with a group that Beautiful. is producing young black girls and just women of color yes. to come out and produce and direct. Right. So I feel like it's not going to happen overnight, no. but it will transition. We're starting. And we're starting to see it. We're starting to see it. Well, my question is, uh, so like you, you brought up the UPNs and, and back in the early 2000s, yeah. but even before that, I mean, the late 90s, we had, you know, Family Matters. Oh, and, yes. Yeah, that was a so That's true. To talk about diversity, but also talk about, you know, not in the movie world, but the television world. Yeah. One thing I've seen is why in the 90s, early 2000s, was there this burst of mm -hmm. diversity on camera? And then it went Nothing. away. Yeah. And as it went away, the same thing with family television. As Absolutely. diversity went out, That's all true. the shows, it was like girlfriends and came dramas. in and it was like, okay, yep. We see the family element elements, but we also get you know the little hip yes, yes. hip moments that you know we go through as we're getting older. Yeah. Where? Why do you think that that pocket kind of came? I don't. Television? You know, that's a great question because I hadn't thought about that. I don't know what happened. Uh, maybe they didn't make enough money. Uh, maybe they just decided we don't want to do. I'll say this: when you saw those type of shows, those were black shows. Right. 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 These aren't just shows, they're black shows. And so for some reason, it's like how people sometimes feel like, oh, a black person moves into my neighborhood, that must mean the, you know, the, the uh, what's the word, the... Uh, the value. Thank you, property. thank you, the property value, it goes right down. down yeah. I almost feel that way that they felt the same way about black shows. Mm -hmm. Just like with the WB and the UPN, when they dropped those shows, they then got, just dropped them and then they brought on the white shows. Right. Yeah. As if, oh, we don't want to be associated with that. Uh, T T TBS did the same thing where they is it TBS is that the yeah TBS, TBS. yeah no, TBS. TBS TBS yeah TBS where they had all these black shows and yeah. all of a sudden oh, no black shows <laughs> yeah like we can't we can, if we have one black show then we're kind of a black network we don't want to be that so we right. got to get rid of all of them I think that kind of thing happened so it was like that or more so like they saw the numbers were doing well and they it more was intim like scary like wait a minute we can't yeah but become... yeah we don't want to be BT yeah, right. yeah right, like right. anything is because wrong I with can't that. imagine girlfriends uh, oh girlfriends you know, was, like no. the numbers on all those shows oh, Family Matters yes they were the huge. Parkers, like, they were huge, just like the today what we have with the scandal yeah. and the same thing. I don't know what happened, except that I'm glad that that's over. Yeah. Right? I can speculate all day about why it happened and who was in charge and what. Maybe there's some personal thing. Who right. knows? But I'm glad that that stage is over, and now we're seeing tele just great television yeah, shows right. that happen to have black people, Latino people, Asian people. And right. it's just a great show. Yep. Yeah. Now we're at that place, and I'm excited about that. And whoever, whoever is in charge at this point, I feel like they're seeing seeing it, they want to represent what's really going on in our country. They see the importance mm -hmm. and they see that the, the, the color lines are changing yes. in a lot of ways. And Absolutely. We have now what our first black network president ABC. at yes, ABC, ABC, which is huge. Yeah. Um, in 2002, you were cast on one of my favorite shows, yes. which I think is a just goes on the history as a cult classic, yes. is Girlfriends yeah. as Monica. Yes. And when you saw that script and saw that character, what did you instantly th think and what attracted you to that character? Well, it's funny. She was only supposed to be two episodes just so you know, which is wow, really, really interesting. This is why I always tell people, when you go in for a guest stop, uh, spot, don't think of it as that. You belong on that show. Whether or not they bring you back, that's one thing. Right. But I'm a part of this this life, this, this yeah. whatever you created, this character's a part of it. So that's the way you have to think. You can't be, oh, it's just one. I, I'm a prime example. I ended up being a series regular on a show and it was supposed to be two episodes. Wow. So that being said, when I read it, I knew her instantly. You know, it was like, oh, that girl. That's this is that girl. I'm nothing like that girl. I'm not. I'm not. The only thing, the only similarity I will say between Monica and myself is that I do. I want my. I want my man to be the best he can be. Sure. Right. So 
that that's true but she was something else you know she was something else people still have strong feelings about that character oh, like, it was, yeah she stood out she feelings. stood out on that yeah. show but when I saw it I was excited of course I was like oh this is perfect but I knew I was like well Everybody wants to be in the show. It was like the number one show at the time yeah. um, for African Americans. It was the show, and yeah. everybody was going in for this role. And I was like, "Well, I'm just going to go in and do how I see her." And I went in blazing. You know, I I did things in that <laughs> audition room I would never do. I thought I would never do. Like I brought in some props. You know, like she had this thing over her eyes. Like I really went. I, I think it's balls out. What is it? What is uh, the balls saying? Out. No, balls I was out. right. Balls <laughs> out. I never remember anything but lines. But anyway. <laughs> I went in and I just went for it. And so when Mara, they love what, what I brought into the room for this character. And I have to say with Mara Brock Akil, is she could have put anybody in that role and she chose me. And she, for me, that was, I still, she's still one of my favorite people for believing in me when she didn't have to. There were so many people she could have chosen. But I felt like it was for me. But every time something's for you doesn't mean you're going to get it, right? Yeah. But it, it happened. So I was excited. I saw the script and I was like, this is mine. So where did the uh, conversation come in? Like, girl, we want to keep you. Well, you know, they called again. Oh, we like her. Another episode. I was like, oh. How many times did you again. audition? We like her. Um, I had a first call with casting, then a second call with uh, Mara, with okay. the producers, and then that was it. And, um, yeah, it happened right away. It wow. happened right away. And then I was gone for a while, and then I was pregnant, And but Jill's character was pregnant at the same time, so I came on for just a few episodes during that time. And then I had Solomon, and then I was on Everybody Hates Chris, and then I couldn't be on both shows. So they, Mara wanted this character back in Girlfriends, so then I went back to Girlfriends, and then I was written off of uh, Everybody Hates Chris. Well, one of the key and important storylines for Girlfriends was your relationship with William. Yes. And, you know, there's been a lot of online things about a reunion and about I you know. guys coming back. First of all, would you do a reunion, and is that in the works at all, or is it any First of all, uh, yes. <laughs> you were like, oh, you know, that's not a question. No, <laughs> honey, please. Asked. No, because people are still talking about this movie. Like, Mara yeah, wants it to happen. Everybody wants it to yeah. happen, but it, it's really a CBS uh, situation in terms of, because they own the rights to it. So that's why one of the things Mara was talking about, maybe mid-last year, maybe six months ago, were, was telling the fans to write to the mm -hmm. network and say, hey, we want this movie to happen. And of course I do because you know my character was still pregnant. She's still walking around pregnant eight years later. I don't know. Right. You know we don't see. <laughs> right. I'm just saying we haven't seen her as a baby and all that whole thing. There's so many unanswered questions yeah. for these characters, and it'd be really just great to see where they ended up. Where would you predict that they ended up today, William and, and Monica? I think. <laughs> I think they probably would have divorced. Uh -huh. Listen, it's not terrible to say, but I think they probably would, but they still love each other. Yeah. Um, and they would get back together. So we would see them having, a, you know, trying to reconcile when the movie starts. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because she's a lot. And then now she has a baby. You know, she can be, and maybe William's like, William, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe they, you know, they separated. Let's say separated. And now they're trying to get back together. And then we see them finally, you know, her let down her her guard and really be, I don't know, like the woman that she always thought she could be without yeah. the influence of her parents who made her this hard woman. So it'd be interesting. I mean, that arc, you got three more seasons, girl. That's Boom. what I'm saying. Boom. Okay, I can write now. <laughs> Listen, she's like, I, I'm multitask. Okay. <laughs> so we just put in this energy out in the air. The same. <laughs> and now with the show, it seemed to, a lot, it seemed to, kind of abruptly end because yeah. it was on for six years it was had great ratings I mean you, like you were saying eight. you were eight, 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 years. eight years I was on for six of them mm -hmm. you were on yeah. for six it was on for eight years and then 18 to 34 was the key demo for, yeah. the, for the show everybody yeah. was relating to the show yeah. why do you think it, it abruptly ended well it was during the writer's strike so mm, that's, that's how it, that's, that's why really, really okay. that's how it happened because um, we had to shoot one last episode before the writer's strike happened and then we we went on hiatus, and then we were told we were coming back. Uh, let's say a Sunday we were told we're coming back, and then that next Sunday we were told, no, we're not. And so I think what happened was, I don't know what happened. I think it got expensive. Mm. I, I think it got expensive for the network, and they were like, you know, this is a... This is a chance if I can get y'all off of here, you know, right. <laughs> you know, really, yeah. you know, it's a, it's an opportunity to to let you guys go, and um, 
and this is me speculating, so this is not, I, I don't know if that's true. All I'm thinking is, why else would it have stopped when it was yeah. the number one show? I think yeah. it got expensive, and they weren't willing to budge on it. I think okay. that's what happened. Mm-hmm. Well, we hope for a movie. reunion. Yeah. Listen, I want to see that movie. Yeah, I think me, too. Well. me too. Me <laughs> too. Well. And just for pop culture, what that movie would represent is Absolutely. insane. I think so too. That's crazy. That's yeah, one of the most, I think, that. one What's of the most okay, important see, television yeah. shows. You know, get some tweets. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start That's the right. campaign right here on That's Black right Hollywood now. Live. Let's do it. And you also mentioned that you were working on Everybody Hates Chris with yes. Terry Crews and that yes. great cast. How was it working with him and just I you worked with him twice? <laughs> I worked with him different... twice. I love Terry. I mean, the guy you see all the time, you know, in terms of if you see him out, he's like fun and loving. He's like that. That's yeah. the guy he is. He's really that guy. And he could be, you know, he's big. He could be intimidating, but he's not. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was an NFL player. He's just a nice guy. He's a big guy. personality, but Big nice personality. Guy. Funny. Hilarious. Really funny. Like, just, you know, just just funny. One on one. Just like, can yeah. crack you up at his house. Crack you up all the time. And that's the thing that shocked me the most is that he was so funny. Nice guy, and everybody likes him. And it's real. It's, it's real. He seems like that. He gives me that energy that that's he just, he's genuinely like that. Yeah. His whole family's great. And, and then from there, yeah. um, you have moved on to many different projects. Why did I get married? Yeah. Uh, you worked heavily with Tyler Perry on that. What was? Did you? I know that you also have dabbled in directing. Yes. And what did you take from him with his style? Because he was obviously the director I mean, and actor. This was a time. This is still kind of the beginning of his his uh, start. His his um, I want to call that a. It's it's so big. I don't know the word to use for him, but it's like, like his. Um, I feel like I feel like I'm playing gestures right look, now. Look, look, just, look, good at Hollywood too. games. Look, 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 game look, right just show up. Um, but his whatever. I can't think of a word. This happens to me all the time. But before what we know of Tyler Perry today, let's yeah. put it that way. So this was like his second movie. Yeah. He, uh, or no, it's the first movie. Second movie, first of this franchise of this particular. Um, why did I get married? He was incredible in terms of the amount of things he could do. What's crazy? Yeah. Okay, so we're shooting a scene, right? We're shooting a scene. He's in the scene with me, shooting the scene. He gets up right after the first cut. He goes and watches it, you know, to make sure. It's, and then he uh, adjusts some things. Yeah, he comes back. He does it. I mean, does he need to change some of the writing? You know, this is him constantly, all His the time. His always ticking. Always, because yeah. he's directing, he's writing, he's producing, and he's in it. And he's acting, <laughs> yeah. You know, and yes, a lot. some, some other actors have been able to do that. But it really, it, it takes a particular skill to be able to really do all of that at once and he was really incredible at it and it was great to watch yeah and I even said to him what how are you doing all of this and he's just like I just do and I love that I just do wow. I just do yeah, I, I just like do that. I need that on the shirt too yeah I just, I just do. do I just do me I, I don't even do. want to think about why I shouldn't be doing it I just do I like that I do too and then now you are <laughs> on one of my favorite shows I must say yes it is American Crime Story yes and you play Dale Cochran. Yes. How much involvement was she at all with the character, or were any of the original people kind of heavily involved at all with no, the show and creating I, it? No, and I will say, you know, it's based on the book. So they wanted to s- stay true to the book. So what would happen if we go out and talk to everybody that we're playing? You'll get all these different yeah. stories, and yeah. then you're not true to the story that the producers are producing, right? this is the story we're telling. So they didn't want us to go out and conversate with the people that we're playing because it can affect what they're, what they're, the story they're True. telling. Yeah. Um, so we didn't. I would love to meet Del Cochran, really would. So the, what I took from, I look at my script, and I am Del Cochran. You know how we already talked about how I am about right. my work, right? <laughs> a little crazy. You and got so, pictures of Johnny all over the place. Right. And OJ, what are you doing? No, I'm just saying, yes, but I'm, I'm crazy <laughs> like that. So that's what I did. You know, I created my Dale by what they told me my Dale is. Yeah. Um, is it true to who she is and who? I don't know. So I would never say this is Dale. The, these conversations happened. I don't know if they happened. I think they did a beautiful job in assuming that they did, and maybe they do know that they happened. Girl, I believe. I yeah. watched it like it's the you news. Better I mean, glue. <laughs> you know, I'm glued to you it. better. So it's 
it's exciting. I want to hear what she thinks. Yeah. You know, I really would love to meet her. Um, so we'll see if that happens. But no, most of us did not. Some people did it anyway, um, but they didn't want us really to do that. Because that's the curiosity from it. I mean, yeah. after, especially like you said, now you're watching it. Yeah. So to see it all kind of put together, I know they're not really a part of it, but the Kardashians have been mm-hmm. very vocal yeah. about very. Their, how they feel about it. Yeah, so yeah. I, 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 it intrigues me that these other characters haven't come out or these yeah. people haven't come out and said, said anything. Hey, yeah. Girl, can that we ain't talk right? about <laughs> Yeah, what you do? That scene did not happen. We haven't had any of that. And just with the Kardashians, because I, I said this before to some uh, another thing where people were so mad that they're involved in mm-hmm. the, like, because they're like, oh, do you have to put them in there? And my, my, it comes off like exploitation yeah, in but, a way. But, but in it, my, my opinion of it is, those are his kids. The only reason we know that is because we know them now, yeah, right? right? So you, people either like them they don't they're so strong if they're polarizing you like them or you don't but these are his children and if uh, Marsha Clark's son was what the Kardashians are now we would be like why did she have to give him cereal in that scene that's that's exploitation you know you know what I'm saying yeah. these are his children and they were a huge part of his life and so they should be included we just have these strong opinions about them now True. that it becomes this exploitation maybe yeah. or do you have to put them in I say yeah you do I mean, Loved I'm sure kids. it helps with the sale uh, views on the show. Yeah, and that, that I'm sure that don't hurt. <laughs> but it, but because of who Ryan Murphy is, he's not going to do it just because. He's so right. He doesn't have to. Yeah. Because O.J. Simpson, I mean, all you have to do is do this O.J. Simpson, and boom, people are going to come and watch and see what they thought they knew or they didn't know. It's now, that kind of Had you thing. read the book before? No, not before. So oh, no. So you, you going into filming this, do you already kind of have, and obviously we experienced the O.J. Yeah. trial you know, live. Yes, yes. You already went in thinking... A oh, yeah. Way. I did. What did I this did. filming experience afterwards kind of make you think? What I didn't really grasp when I was growing up and we saw this, you know, I didn't grasp the, the racial yeah. mm-hmm. part of the yeah. case. Of I did attention. as a black person just watching, but didn't realize how it played into the trial. Mm-hmm. And then even if you watched the episode last week, you can see it starting to change the trial because Marsha Clark thought, <laughs> This is done. But as soon as they're like, well, may there be a black thing? Right. All of a sudden, it opens up all these possibilities of um, reasonable doubt, mm. right? Especially with uh, for- Foreman, it's like, boom. It's like, oh, it's done. So um, I didn't realize that growing up. So that really changed a lot. And that for me, Dale, my Dale, and for Johnny, it became about race. It became about fighting for something bigger. And what we always have to remember, there are two people that lost their lives in a horrific way, yeah. right? So, But I feel like sometimes they took a back seat to the circus mm-hmm. of this trial, right? So I always want to remember that they had families, they had you know, mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, and that's real for those people that lost them. But so, well, but coming and talking about the trial, I do want to say that it did become about race because of so many things that were happening, which is happening today. Yeah. Then it's two years after Rodney King yeah. was beat and we saw it. Like that was the first time that, that it was, was the first time. captured yeah. mm-hmm. and they still got off. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, but we're still dealing with that. No, I was going to say we're still dealing with that in 2016. That's crazy, right? That's crazy. Same, same thing today. Yeah. We can catch it on, t- on camera and yeah. then you're like... He just shot him. His like, hands. I'm, I'm watching it. I can rewind up. it on my yeah, phone. Like, yeah. Did I miss something? Yeah. yeah. Like that kind of thing is what's happening now. Like that that began to be Johnny's fight because he was always that guy, that lawyer. He was that guy fighting for the rights of those who couldn't fight for themselves. And usually they were African American or just down and out kind of people that were stomped on by the man. Um, and that this case became that too. But he Dale be- wanted him not to touch it. Oh no. Dell said to take it. That's why he took it in our. Oh wait, story. at the party. That's okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, at the party. Yeah, yeah. That's what She's, she, yeah. he always want. He already wanted to. Let's put it that way. He was already, he wanted to, and he just needed that little push. Mm-hmm. And she was the woman to push him. And always that woman behind the strong man who's holding him up when he's down. You'll see more of that, um, on the coming episodes that he had issues and problems in terms of thinking he's not doing the right thing, is it working? And she was the one to hold him up and say, keep going. Did your opinion change at all as far as, I don't know if you believe he did it or not, but had it changed? I'll tell you. (laughs) Do you believe he did it? I do think he did it. And has, by filming this and kind of following the storyline of what Ryan's doing, has that changed your opinion at all? Because we had Ty White in here. So... 
and I'll, he kind of said it sort of his opinion changed a little bit about who might have done it. Yeah, you know, I've always heard the conspiracy theories of his son and all that yeah. kind of yeah. things, which is possible. Um, but I've always felt this is what I felt back then. I felt that they they um, framed a guilty man. That's mm. how I always felt. Okay. Growing yes. when I was now after doing this show, I feel I don't know if they did because the cops were like, OJ. Yes. OJ. You know, that's the yeah. kind of treatment he received because he was OJ. And they don't want to go. That was, that's all true, right? Yeah. The way they treated him with, with, you know, oh, he's OJ. We can't ask him too much. Give him some orange juice. Whatever. Um, so I don't know if that, that kind of is changing for me now, whether or not he was framed. It's kind of changing. But I don't know. I might change it. Because remember, I haven't seen all the scripts. Right. So I don't know what Ryan, mm -hmm. what story he's telling in terms of the TV show. Um, so now I still feel like that, that hasn't changed. I still feel like he did it. You still do. And I'll tell you why. Um, I watched the tapes for the uh, civil case mm -hmm. when they were interviewing him or I guess you can say interviewing him. And they, there's, I just, I could, I you just, just know. You just yeah. could tell. I yeah, mean, I, so many things were thrown out of the, the case for the the um, criminal case. So a lot of the jury didn't hear a lot of the evidence really? was thrown That's out. That's what I've heard. But the civil yeah. case, it was all in there. And he could not fight it. And he and watch him squirm with the questioning. Mm. And it was just so clear to me. Like, let me just say, I was supposed to be a lawyer. Boom, bang. Did you know that? No, I'm telling I that. That's I what my mother wanted me to do. I said, I can play one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I was supposed to go to law school, all of that, after, even after Boston Conservatory. So I'm really good at, at picking up people and seeing mm -hmm. things. And I just, I think he did. Now, everybody can have a different opinion about that, but I, I do. I think he did it. I have to go back and watch those tapes because... I went in and I heard, you know, we had tie-in and yeah. he was like, and everyone, you know, everyone on The View, it was just yeah, like yeah. everyone was saying, when you watch it, <laughs> you're, they're going to say things and you're going to realize that yep. the time, it may make you think, right. wait a minute, what's, I'm like, oh, I'm like, wait a minute, this is going to be some tea. Yeah, you have to watch it. But then just seeing his reaction to everything, I'm like, what is going on with yeah. this man? Yeah. Why are you not thinking clearly? Yeah. It, how, I mean, how can you not... Even if he didn't do it, it's right. like, well, boy, what You're you want to do? You're acting crazy. Yeah. But, but even, but, do you know, they say that he might have had, or he might, might have, like, he's not here anymore, but um, the CTE, is it CTE? Yeah, oh, yeah. Football. From football. From football, yeah. which is very plausible. Yeah, yeah. sure. I mean, there's so many cases I now mean, that are just being reported. Not, and listen, I don't know if that's true, and I don't want to say he did, so then we can excuse some right. of the things that he did, mm -hmm. because even if we didn't believe that he killed them, he was abusive. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. He beat her. Yeah. A lot, yeah. and we are very sure on that. Um, so something could be wrong with him, you know. And even the way he behaved after was kind of not so. I was gonna say I believe in in some type of karma, and the way he's been acting since then, and just the things that have happened to him now, the, the fact that he's in jail for something some, so silly, something so silly and crazy. That's that's that karma energy. What I personally feel. Oh, absolutely. And then he's been very outspoken too oh. about the fact that. He doesn't like the way, and he hasn't seen the show right. from what I read recently, no. but he didn't like the way the portrayal of Johnny Cochran was in the teases for the show. And I find that really interesting. You know, I'm like, out of all the things, that's, all what, that you that's, that's what you have to, yeah. that's what you have a problem with. Like, yeah. That 30 second tease. Yeah, it's a little, a little strange. strange. A little strange. And he may be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's it go? So, my thing is, you talked about you're not sure who framed him. That's an interesting question because mm -hmm. may, I, I wouldn't think it was the cops now that I'm looking at it. As we have gotten into the age of paparazzi and technology, yes, yes. we saw that that was kind of the beginning of that Absolutely. time. Absolutely. That was a really interesting scene with the guy ran, climbed the tree, took a picture of OJ in the back. Um, I mean, as far as you kind of being in Hollywood yeah. for as long as you have, it's kind of, ha have you, is it a good thing or a bad thing, would you say, as far as this... I mean, we see this from the Kardashians of, being so yeah, young. Yeah, this kind of crazy you type know? of paparazzi type thing. The paparazzi the, thing, and then also, I mean, the Kardashians who were nobody at the time of yeah, O.J. Yeah, yeah, Simpsons, yeah. and now looking at where they are now, yeah. Yeah. and it all kind of started is there. about that photographer. Yeah. I mean, not yeah. really, but... I, I, whether or not I think it's a bad thing, the, the thing I have in my issue with paparazzi is only this. Is that I think there should be some kind of rule how close they can get to people, mm -hmm. right? The man climbing a tree, hey, that's a picture. But the type the of car scene, the type of this, you know, anybody else could get arrested for being all up in your space like this, you know, because it can drive you crazy. 
the only thing I think is should be some space between celebrity and paparazzi. In Europe, there's a law that they have to be a certain um, certain distance away, which I think is actually very good That's and safe smart, yeah. because you may have some great paparazzi, right, that keeps some space, or you can have someone pretending to be paparazzi who wants to do something bad to a celebrity, and you want to know because That's they true. have a camera in their hand. Yeah. I just think there needs to be some kind of law for that. Um, I, I don't have a problem with paparazzi. They're just doing what people, they want a story, and you're a celebrity, and sometimes you have to give up some of your life to have this life. You but, know? I mean, just talking about, like, the racial things, you know? Yeah. It's like, so, okay, they take a picture of yeah. this man with in cuffs. Oh, for sure. So it's almost like, you know, are we blaming the police for the racial things, or do we blame almost oh, the, the media? Oh, the media. Oh, I think that, media. that's kind I think of where some my question of it, when comes. When we say the media, you know, we have to be very clear. It's yes. like, what, what, what media, part, right. what yeah. part. Yeah. But they're going to get whatever's going to sell, right? Absolutely. So what's going to sell when we're talking about the OJ trial is OJ now a black man because mm. now he's no longer OJ he's black now right, <laughs> right, right yeah. <laughs> time he's magazine black. how they taint, uh, yes, tinted, his, tinted skin. his skin and then to see him in handcuffs all of a sudden he is now regular black right. whatever that means right. Right? he's no longer uh, running through the airport OJ Simpson no Those days no <laughs> right <laughs> and so I think that is a reflection of our society and they're just getting paid to report it in such a way that people are feeding off of that. They're like, oh yeah, look at this white man. See, he black. That's they always, whatever yeah. those people are going to believe. And then the other side of us is going to be like, why did they make him darker? Really? Yeah, I right. can see that. Right. Yeah. We're, we're very clear. Like, yeah. And I'm sure you are too, Greek man. Like, you can, <laughs> <laughs> Am I 2020? <laughs> you, you can see when something's dark. And some, most of the time, people can't. They just, sub, you know, they're subconscious. Like, ooh, he looks scary now. Oh, that black man with that white woman. You know, it's all that's been happening since slavery, honey. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, I think there's some bad parts of people, and they're they're some of them are paparazzi, some of them are police officers, some of them are black people, some of them are white people, some of them are Asian, some of them are Latino. <laughs> there's bad people in everything, right? So I that is clear. Just because I'm black doesn't mean oh I, I can't be bad. You know, there's some bad people, and vice versa for every yeah, race. Right. So. Mm. And then the cast is just such a dynamic cast. I mean, Courtney B. Vance, all the way oh down to John Travolta. Who was somebody that you were excited to work with or just see their scenes on set? Well, I was excited to work with Courtney. He's you know, amazing. First of all, with Dale, she she wasn't around a lot of them. True. You know, So yeah. when I'm on set, I'm seeing everybody, and I'm, I'm thoroughly excited to watch their work and see them, and they're so kind and polite. Um, but with Courtney, I knew we were going to be working very close together. So I was excited to work with him. And then when we met, we like clicked right away. It was as if I was Dell and he was Johnny. I love that. Right? Boom. We just, he was my husband. We were, it was just, Ryan knew what he was doing. Yeah. Because when I got this audition, I thought, I have to tell this story. So I got the audition. I was like, I'm not going to get this. This is what, this was my thought, right? Because I looked at the cast. And I thought, I'm not going to get this. This is going to be someone else. I don't really look like her. Why did I go in for this? I almost canceled that audition b the day before, the day of. As I'm driving there, wow. I was going to call and be like, I'm just, I just like, I'm not going to get it. This is how bad, you know, I had gotten. I was like, I'm not going to get this. I, why am I, you know, they're not going to pick me. And so God was like, yeah, okay, well, you know, this, right. let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay. So I went in, I did the audition. I got a call few weeks later and said oh they want you for Dale I was like what mm. really and I was excited first of all it was Ryan Murphy so I love yeah, his work love he's Ryan. ridiculously talented yeah. just his brain the way it works and then you see the cast and I was like I'm I didn't know that you know I knew I could do it because I'm an actor you know I it's what I do but I didn't think they would see that I was Dale and I saw it in myself but I was at that point, sometimes you get in your career, you're like, I'm not going to get it. Right. You know, it's just, it's, they're going to pick somebody else with a bigger name or whatever. You can talk yourself into those kinds of things. And it's just a prime example of don't do that. Well, that's Show a great up. story, too, because it's also inspirational because it's like stick with it. Yeah. You know? Boom. Because you never know what's yes, going to happen. Stick you're, with it. Yes. Even if you're like, this is so wrong for me, get in the room. And if anything, you have three minutes to perform. 
It's make, what you want to do. Right, make the like, best of it. Make the best of it. Have yeah. fun or, or make them be- remember you for that next project. Yeah. Well, that maybe you're not right for this one, but you are so right for this one I got in my head. Oh, this girl. But had you never showed up, you would have never got it. Had I not shown up, I wouldn't be here talking to you guys right now. That's right. Girl, you're done. We're glad I'm that just, you showed I'm up. Just saying, <laughs> We're glad you showed I'm, up. I'm glad I showed up, too. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be talking about it. I wouldn't. I would be watching it being like, oh, she's doing a great job. Whatever. You know, it's like, it's it's a... I just want everybody to hear that, really hear that. No, that's a beautiful, that's like you just spoke to me because there's so many times in this industry alone, creative people go through that funk. And yes. it's like, should we talk, should we, we talk just show up? Should we just, yeah. <laughs> and we, you have to talk each other into it and yes. you just show up and you get there and exactly. Uh, so working with Ryan Murphy, yes. I mean, uh, and with all this diversity on television. Yes, we love would it. Would you uh, ever... If he was to ask you to go on to American Horror Story, jump oh. into the horror world. Honey, please. Some of my favorite show on the I'll TV. I'll be crazy for the next, you know, how long we <laughs> right. I got right. that yeah. right. I was looking right. right. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. Uh, but yes, I would, yeah, of course. I mean, anything he does. Yeah. I just really think he's quite fantastic. Is there a character you, that you would like to play? That you haven't yet, like a, oh a, yes, for sure. There's we're doing this crowdfunding in in a, a month for this. I, you know, sometimes you got to do it yourself, mm-hmm. right? And so you know, I have some pieces that we're pitching right now, some television shows we're pitching right now. But this one is one where I get to fight. You know, I I'm a boxer. I do Krav Maga. I'm serious about it. But no one's, you know, giving me that opportunity. You know, there's one audition I went on where I was going to play a spy. They end up calling my people and saying, you know, she was gonna get picked, but her boobs are too big and so I was like really I love how you whispered that too. I know, like boobs are too right. big. Like they can't hear that. Right, they can't hear that. Or, or the people can't see you pointing <laughs> at your boobs. <laughs> and then they're set. Um, <laughs> and so I was really upset. I was really upset about it because I really wanted it. She was crazy. I love playing crazy. She was crazy. She was just a great role. And I thought, what? Well, I can't help that, right? I can't help how your body's shaped. And, and I know sometimes they, you know, whatever. So I thought, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to create a piece for myself that this woman gets to fight. She gets to fight for something she believes in. She gets to. We, I want to see this woman of color in this position. And so I, I'm. Um, I wrote it, and we're shooting it in about two months. We're doing oh, a congratulations! So how can we Thank donate you. to the crowdfunding? Right. Oh, you know, I will let you know. <laughs> right, we can promote Trust it right me. here. I'll be back on here, y'all. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. And no, I really will tell you. I'm excited oh about my gosh, it. I Very love excited that. about it. What a lot of people also may not know is that you and your husband produce music together. Yes. And I know that you had a holiday record, yes. correct? That's right. Because I stumbled upon it on iTunes. Yeah. I was like, look at this, the whole family, it was a cool <laughs> little thing going on. Is that something that you would like to do more in the future? Because, I mean, I know you have a musical background yeah. with all the, instru- the 20 instruments yeah, that you can that's play. that's hilarious. <laughs> would you like to maybe dabble in that as well and become a pop star in the future? Yeah, well, I have to say I did do that early. And just getting a little off subject, but not really subject, but... Um, the thing that's going on right now in the news with um, uh, Kesha, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So I'm not going to comment on that because I don't know. I never want to comment on something so personal. Sure. And we'll never do that. But what I will say is this industry is scary for women sometimes. It really is. So I was at a point in my career after being at the conservatory, I was offered a, a record contract to mm-hmm. for pop music. And I was excited about it. You know, and I had to go to New York and... My parents, we were both, all of us were naive to the business, right? And for me, I, this guy was big, and he had said all the right things. I get to the hotel, and he's in the same hotel room. And, I, and I'm, I'm looking for the other, okay, okay, that's a little uncomfortable. Then I'm looking for the other bedroom. There was not. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, no, I'm sleeping out here. You, you, you're okay. So, but in the middle, I can't believe I'm telling you all, but I'm telling you all. In the middle of the night, he comes over like he wants to, you know, and I, I must have scared him because... Ha- you know, I got a little crazy. <laughs> I'm just telling y'all. I, she said, you know, I got a little crazy. I got a little crazy. But so it didn't happen, but it could have. Right. So I know the industry. I'm not talking about this one in particular, but the industry can be that way. And I didn't want to, any part of that industry, right? None of it. So I went straight. My focus was like theater, and I'm going to Broadway, and then eventually film and television. So I let that go um, in terms of wanting to be a pop star or pop singer. I don't know star but pop singer and so um brad and i my husband sings he sings 
incredibly well. He tours, he does all that. So he's like, Keisha, you have to sing again. I'm like, I don't want to sing. He's like, you have to. Let's do a Christmas album. I was like, okay. So that's how it first started. So now we're talking about getting an album done this year. And, and it doesn't, if it sells, great. If it doesn't, ah, it's, it's okay. Fun. It's a fun project. Yeah, you should use all your talents, right? A so, absolutely. Yeah. And that story that you took, so I love that you spoke about that because uh, I do a music show here and how many female artists I talk to yeah. that Has off camera what they'll talk about but won't say it. So the fact that you said that because so many girls go through this. So I see many. these new artists coming out and they think it's that's what it's what it yeah, is. Yes, that I have to do this yeah. or it's just the way it is. And I have to say it's not just girls, it's no. boys, it's men. It's 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 it's, it's whoever sides. wants yeah. to make it. Yeah. Some, you know, vultures out there are like, well, this is what you need to do if you want to. And I was like, oh no, then I don't want it. <laughs> right. yeah, that's this not is the, not my purpose. Yeah, right. that is not that's not how I'm going to make it. And then you can have that kind of thing in the film and television industry as well, but I'm not that person. You know, I'm not you then some people are like, Well, I would sleep with him anyway, so if he's gonna give me a job, blah, 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 whatever. That's not me. Like right. it's just and it's no judgment on those people that make those decisions, you know, those um, decisions to do that to get ahead, but that's just not my that's not how I'm That's not your role. Then. Yeah. <laughs> how is balancing motherhood with your career and being a wife as well? Well, because I have a really supportive husband, and he travels, but sometimes our schedules just work out. You know, Solomon has us almost all the time. He's almost never away from us. So we always figure out a way that he's always with us. He doesn't even, he's like, I'm like, I'm shot some today. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Uh, you know, he just doesn't care. He's not bothered by it. I'm, I'm able to do it because I have a great husband and I have yeah. a great son. Um, and that's a blessing because I know a lot of people can't do it. It's, it's difficult, yeah. especially the type of show. If you're doing a, um, a drama, an hour drama, that would be very difficult to, to do what I do right now in terms of being there all the time for Solomon because that is a 14-day hour job. That's yeah. very difficult. Um, but I, I haven't had to deal with that. How is he like when you're getting in these characters? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Solomon or Brad? Solomon. I mean, Solomon. It, well, because he's a little actor himself, you okay, know. Okay, so he plays. Yeah, <laughs> but he doesn't want to be an actor. Let's be clear. That's what I was he ask. wants to be a Does marine wanna... biologist. Okay. Oh. And, but he is so talented. I just think he doesn't because we do. You know what I mean? Like we're like play the piano. I don't want to play the piano. So you know he wants to just do science and and I love that too. I think it's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with the that. The nerd in you. Yeah, but he <laughs> but he's such a good actor. Just so would you would you mind if he got into the business? Or no, you? I'd be right up on there though. I'd be like, <laughs> you know, I'm that. I would be that mother. You'd be momager. I I would. I would. <laughs> she didn't hesitate. Wanna, she was like, oh, absolutely. I would. Because I, mean, I want to keep him safe, yeah. right? Yeah. It's not because, oh, I want to be, you know, you have those momagers who want to be famous too. Right. Or I just want to keep him safe. Yeah. You know, so I would be that for sure. <laughs> I, listen, I want you to manage me. I, I can tell that like, you got that good management <laughs> okay. vibe about you. <laughs> absolutely. That's What's next cast. for you? Where can fans find you? Um, what new projects are you working on besides? So um, I have American two Crime? films coming out this year. One's called Frozen Peas, and the other's called Born Guilty. Rosanna Arquette is um, also starring in that. Great films. Um, I'm in the middle of pilot season, which is crazy. Yeah. This, like the lines that are going through my head, it's like three auditions a day. Oh, it's, it's a crazy wow. time, and I have to be off book for myself. So it's a lot of work. Um, and you're writing. And I'm writing and produce. So that's the other thing is we're hoping these two shows that we are pitching, that I'm a co-creator of, my creating partner is Matthew Ryapel. Um, we're hoping that they get picked up. So we're pitching them right now. So wow. prayerfully, if it's meant we'll to be. We'll put it great. out there. Yeah, that's For right. sure. That's right. And then where can fans find you on social media? Oh, uh, my Instagram is my name, Keisha Sharp, with two E's. And... Uh, my Twitter is Keisha underscore Sharp because someone stole my name. So oh. there you go. Oh. And they won't give it back. Right. <laughs> well, Jesse, where can fans find you? Everywhere at DJ Jesse J and jessejanity.com. Boom. You, you can find me at Daryl Christian <laughs> on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Keisha, it has been an absolute pleasure. I, I mean, you got to come back, <laughs> especially when these projects get picked up. We want to oh, promote them. I'm going to be like this. Y'all said I can come back. Anytime. Yeah. You, are, you, you are welcome here. You got a home. Okay. You got Thank a home. you. And also check her out on FX, American Crime Story. Yes. She's playing Dale Cochran. She's doing her thing. Thank you. And uh, we are excited to see where the rest of those episodes go Me too. this season. Me too. We should all watch it together. We got screening parties here in the That's studio. That's right. Like, oh, I didn't know they did that. You know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Black Hollywood Live Conversations, and we will see you on the next one. Bye. Boom.
Oh. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Christie, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio. Instagram me at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. And I know. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.